Okay, do we have any more? Oh my goodness gracious, I am not going to insult you on trying to pronounce that name, but it's a it's a it's a, a very unique name. Your question, I'll just use there rather than take a swing at that because uh, I'll never even get close. What will you suggest for treating subclinical acidosis, either an, uh, a buffer or an alkalizer, because it is causing lameness in my farm? Wow. Rumen pH is 5.1 four hours after feeding. Wow. Um, what a, uh, an interesting case study. This should be a, a case study. <laughs> Let all the students take a swing at this before I, I give you my biased answers as far as that goes. Let's go backwards on his statement. Uh, certainly a rumen pH below 5.8 is definition of SARA, which is subacute rumen acidosis. The question is, he gets there at the fourth hour after feeding. Uh, so he's really low. When you get below 5.5, then we start calling that more acute acidosis, which means it's it's a heavy hitter, a more, more of a concern as far as that goes. So first of all, I, th I think we have to go back and adjust the ration. Uh, I think we can work with, uh, with uh, you know, 5.5. 8, 5.7 maybe, but boy, once you get down to 5.1, you are really hammering uh, the fiber digesting bacteria. And then the question is how long do these cows stay at this really low level? Does it happen after two hours after feeding, four hours, six hours? How long does it take before it comes back to 5.8? And that is what they call the, the, the time under the curve. The longer that time is, the more impact it's going to have on the rumen as far as that goes. So I think if we're at 5.1, uh, there are some bigger factors to look for in there before I start jumping in with, with um, uh, a buffer or an alkalizer. Uh, my answer would be that I would be using both, be using both. So remember the buffer is going to try to pull that pH up around 6.25. That is the pKa. That's the, the point of dissociation. That's where it really buffers. That's what makes sodium bicarb so popular because it's hitting the sweet spot where we'd like to keep that rumen at. And that's, of course, why the, the amount of saliva being produced becomes such a key factor. Uh, the product you could look at, because I think it could be cheaper, would be sodium sesquicarbonate. And that's about half sodium bicarb and half sodium carbonate. And the sodium carbonate would be the alkalizer there. Another alternative is to use sodium bicarb with, uh, with magnesium oxide. And the normal ratio there is two parts bicarb to one part magox, or in some cases, three to one. That are some of these commercial products will have in them as far as that goes. Uh, the magnesium can also be a plus uh, in, in the diet as well. I am nervous. I am nervous that... Uh, uh, I can pull that 5.1 up to 5.8 or higher just with the buffer because you got a tremendous acid load on those animals. I look at the data that came from the University of Kentucky uh, a number of years ago, and there they were looking at subacute, true subacute acidosis. pH dropped down at two hours after feeding to seven hours after feeding, and it went down to about a 5.5. And there they use magox and sodium bicarb, and they pulled it right up to 6.1 or very close to 6. So uh, on that, on subacute acidosis, I think I can buffer my way out of that. Uh, and you're probably going to be looking at somewhere around 0.75% of the cow's body weight as sodium bicarb, and then bring your magox in with that. So you're probably going to be feeding somewhere uh, in, in the range of, of um, uh, uh, 200 grams of bicarb and maybe... Uh, 60, 70 grams of magox at this point. But I am really nervous. I would not promise you that you can buffer your way out of this as far as that goes. I'm not surprised you're seeing some lameness in the herd. I would also expect to see a decrease in dry matter digestibility, which means maybe ideally the ration doesn't achieve the level of milk that it's that the model would predict it at as well. So um, that, that's, a, that's a tough situation. And uh, and by what I mean, other factors. Well, 
if we're down at 5.1, I would have to look at slug feeding. I'd have to look at feed sorting. I'd have to look at forage particle size. I'd have to look at levels of uh, forage NDF in the rations, the levels of starch, and the whole thing, the amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids would come into play. In some respects, monenzin can be a player in that too. If we if we really are in a subclinical acidosis, monenzin can push that a little bit more that direction. So there, there's a lot of a lot of poofas, all those things come into play. So that is a really neat question, and uh, you've got a big challenge. You've got a big challenge on your farm.